Welcome back. Today we're hitting the top 24 wide receiver rankings for fantasy football. Broken down by tiers. We did this for the running back position earlier on Tuesday. We will link that video down below as we'll throw it on the end screen as well. So you just got to sit back. You got to relax. You got to tuck your shirt in. You got to stop yelling. You got to flex your traps. We got a whole lot of actionable items for you to do. But realistically, just just some of that. And then when the end screen hits, you can go back and watch the running back version of this video. So our top 24, it's going to be based on half PPR. And what I want to do as well is I'm going to talk about their receiving yardage line as it stands on underdog right now. So, you know, whether they project them to be playing the full 17, I don't know, but they have their higher lowers for receiving yardage for the entire season on underdog right now. So we're basically going to compare and contrast where I have them ranked just as my fantasy wide receivers versus where their yardage line is. Now, obviously, this is not a perfect science, not a perfect measure, because there's a lot more that goes into the actual fantasy line, right? It's not just receiving yards. There are the number of receptions. There are the touchdown score. There are the involvement in the rushing game. If you're one of those type of wide receiver beats, you know what I mean? So we'll go through, and I think those will be some useful tools to just kind of like use as bumpers, right? If you're so far fucking off of where their line is compared to where your fantasy ranks are, it's probably time to take a second look at that. And I found that with a few guys and we'll go through them. We'll talk about it. We'll cry about it. We'll be about it. Let's get it. So just like with the running backs, we broke this down into five tiers. We have the goat tier. Justin Jefferson is just sitting there by himself in the in the petting zoo, just getting fed. No other animals allowed in that type of fucking fence. We've got league winners. We've got weak winners. We've got guys that will 1,000% just finish with 80 catches, 1,100 yards, and eight touchdowns. And then we've got puzzle pieces, meaning there's a lot of moving parts right now, and they need the pieces to kind of fit perfectly in order for them to hit their ceiling or their talent level that we think that uh, they currently have, you know, because not everything goes perfectly correct in fantasy football. However, I guarantee these are the exact perfect rankings for fantasy football. I will not get one single thing wrong this entire season. Let's just start with Justin Jefferson. Uh, Self-explanatory. He's the GOAT. He's the wide receiver one. I would not even question another wide receiver on top of him. I like all the league winners underneath them, and I'm not necessarily going to get upset with you. You're not going to lose your league regardless of who you pick in those top four guys, okay? But Justin Jefferson is the 101 for me. He's the wide receiver one for me. He is the one of everything thing just jefferson the young goat right now let's just move on to the league winners now these are guys who yes can definitely win your league can end up scoring over 20 points per game and can battle justin jefferson for that wide receiver one spot come next year going into next year we have cooper cup of course who is coming off of a shortened season he got hurt but every single game prior to that both seasons prior to that the guy has scored 15 or more ppr points in 92% of his games over the last two seasons. Matt Stafford seems to be healthy. This offense is going to run through Cooper Cup. Their defense is bad. They're going to have to throw the ball a lot. They've got nothing behind him in that offense. So all hell can break loose in that Rams offense, right? If they get rid of Stafford, if Stafford gets hurt, um, I'm not worried about Cup's injury. We've already, you know, done the numbers and ran ran everything we needed to run. We ran the 40-yard dash on the research in terms of Cup's injury, and he should be a full go. We're not worried about the surgery that he needed last season. We're we're more concerned about Stafford, but also like all the reports out of camp and everything out of L.A. seems to be that as long as Stafford's on the field, he's going to be relatively fine. And he hasn't really lost any arm strength. So I'm not overly concerned about him. We have Jamar Chase here at the wide receiver three. We know Jamar Chase. We don't need to talk about Jamar Chase. He is tied to Joe Burrow. He was tied to Joe Burrow at LSU. We saw them make magic together. And now we are in the midst of seeing them make magic together together. Again, it's obviously a high-powered offense. There are a lot of good players in the offense, but Jamar Chase, it really obviously wouldn't surprise me if he ends up as the wide receiver one by the end of the year. I just prefer Jefferson. I think you get a little bit more consistency. I think the fact that he's got to battle T. Higgins sometimes for big games because a lot of the times them two don't really have big games together. Obviously, it's happened before, but if you look back at the numbers, the splits of them, like when one of them finishes the top 15 wide receiver, it almost happens to the point where the other one never does it in the same game. So that's the only thing. Like on a week uh, on a week to week basis, Jamar Chase can put up numbers just as similar as Justin Jefferson. I just question whether or not they have the same season long upside. I don't have that question with Tyreek Hill whatsoever. Again, he's in this elite tier for me where he's yapping about going for over 2000 yards this year. Uh, receiving wise, I think that offense is so condensed. If Tua can stay on the field, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell are going to have a 55% target share between the two of them. They get rid of Mike Isicki. They don't bring in any wide receivers that are noticeable or should 
vacuum up any targets there. They bring in Devon H. It's not like they brought in Jameer Gibbs, right? So they don't really have a pass catcher in that backfield either. It's Jeff Wilson. Like, they got nothing going in that passing game besides an extremely accurate Tua and Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill. So I wouldn't be surprised if Tyree Kill, coming off his best statistical season, gets near it again or even tops it. And again, at the end of this video, we're going to go through the higher or lowers that Vegas underdog has set for these guys for the season and compare where I have them ranked. And if you feel like you can grab any of the over-unders there and make some money on the season long, do yourself a favor, go download the underdog app right now because we're going to be doing pick throughout the entire season, you know, every single game day. Sundays, we're going to be live streaming. We're going to give out favorite picks. Go to underdog.com, download the underdog app. It'll be the first link in the description. And if you use promo code BDGE, on your first deposit of $10 or more, they're going to double it, right? So if you were going to throw down 10 to win 40 on a pick em, now you can throw down 20 to win a bajillion. Within that, you're also going to get our absolutely free fantasy draft guide if you're depositing $10 on Underdog. And our draft guide has all these positional rankings, so you don't have to watch our videos anymore. You just show up to your draft, and we have an entire PDF. It's like 20 pages long or whatever with rankings, super flex, one quarterback, positional rankings, our must draft list, our all fade list, everything you need for your draft simplified, put into a beautiful PDF for you. All this is magical and happening via underdog. And your fantasy team will have magical weeks if you're drafting the wide receivers 5 through 10. We have Stefan Diggs, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Jalen Waddell, Devonta Adams, and Garrett Wilson. Now, Devonta Adams has been sort of a polarizing topic of fantasy football. I have him as my wide receiver 9. When we look at the underdog higher-lower lines... He is the biggest discrepancy by far that I have in my rankings. His line is set at 1,325.5 receiving yards. That is tied for number two behind Justin Jefferson with Cooper Cup. I have him down as wide receiver nine. I've been vocal about this. I'm worried about Jimmy G. If you look at the splits here, pretty much every good receiver that plays with Jimmy G has worse statistical numbers with Jimmy G on the field. I worry about the offense. I worry about the passing touchdowns. Jimmy G has been in the league fucking forever at this point. He's had one season throwing more than 20 passing touchdowns in it. So if we're projecting like 21 scores, Devonta Adams is going to have to have like a 65% touchdown share, which I guess is not really out of the range of outcomes because he's such a fucking thoroughbred. But like, I don't really want to bet on it. I'm a little bit nervous that Adams is going to come down to earth statistically this year. Like he's still every bit elite that he has been. But like we've seen really, really incredible wide receivers like DeAndre Hopkins or Stefan Diggs in Minnesota, like be held down by quarterback play before and just not getting the shots downfield and not getting the touchdown targets. And that's the other thing, like Jimmy G doesn't take shots downfield where Derek Carr did. Might not have been great or super accurate, but like he did throw it down there and Devonta Adams made plays on those. So end of season stats probably will be there. I just think we're going to have some lower floor games that we're not used to seeing out of Devonte Adams. So I got Diggs here. I'm not worried about all that shit going on in Buffalo. I think he's as good as ever. And Josh Allen is not someone that you just overthink. One of the best quarterbacks in the league. AJ Brown, he's in the weak winner category, obviously, because he's someone that I don't know how consistent he's going to be over the course of the year, but like he'll give you those weeks where he pops off for 162 touchdowns. Tied to Jalen Hurts, who's been just consistently improving year in and year out since he's been in the NFL. This offense just will not be able to be stopped. The, the Eagles are going to be so good. CeeDee Lamb, I've moved up a little bit. I think prior to this video, maybe like a month ago, I had him all the way down at maybe wide receiver 10 or 11. I just think the Cowboys actions have not matched their words where they say they want to run more. They say they want to keep their defense fresh and uh, all that kind of shit, but they don't have any running backs to run the ball with 25 times a game. They have Pollard, who's explosive, and then they go out and uh, add Brandon Cooks so and then they draft a tight end early in the draft. So it's like I, I don't really believe that they're going to be a run heavy offense. And if that's the case, if they're a pass heavy offense, then Dak's going to just funnel targets to CeeDee Lamb, who just had targets funneled to him last year and ended up being a fan fantastic fantasy wide receiver. So he's someone that I'm not like overly excited about. I'm not like going out of my way to target him, but obviously if he just kind of falls to me a wide receiver eight, nine, and he ends up being my wide receiver one, I'm cool with it. I am going out of my way to target Jalen Waddle because he's like the wide receiver 13, 14 off the board. And I have him ranked all the way up at the wide receiver eight. I've shown the stats many, many times before, but when Tua is on the field, Jalen Waddle is averaging over 18 PPR fantasy points per game. This dude ranked number one last year in yards per reception in yards per target fourth in yards per route run, only his second year. And if him and Tyreek Hill, like their target shares somehow mesh together where he saw like 60 fewer targets than Tyreek Hill, he's going to explode. And he, he just had a breakout year. He had over 1,300 receiving yards. And that was with 
some shitty quarterbacks for like four or five games of the season. So I'm all in on Jalen Waddell. I already talked about Devontae Adams a little bit. Garrett Wilson's another dude who it's just like hard not to be in on. If there's anyone that you could feel like is kind of out of this elite tier that you already pretty much know he's going to be in that conversation for elite wide receivers come this time next year. It feels like it's Garrett Wilson. I'm a little bit skeptical about what's going on in New York. I think like the hype of Aaron Rodgers being there is a little bit overindulgent at this point. I'm not like fully sold on the Jets being a phenomenal team. I know they were what, like seven and nine last year. They had a like really soft schedule, a lot of tight games that could have went one way or another. So I don't actually think they're like, uh, they're not going to compete for a Super Bowl. Ain't no fucking way. I don't even care with Aaron Rodgers there. So I am, I am, cautiously optimistic about Garrett Wilson's statistics this year, but I'm not drafted. I know people like Jameson in the office has him. I think I'll be like wide receiver six. That's too juicy for me. Again, not a fade for me. I'll, I'll, I'll happily take him as the wide receiver 10 or 11 in a draft, but I'm not going out of my way to grab him, even though I do think he is probably as talented as basically any receiver in the league. I wouldn't be surprised if by this time next year, like Diggs and Garrett Wilson swap spots in the rankings. Next up, we've just got the dudes who I feel super confident are going to go 80 for 1,108 touchdowns because they've all just done that for like four years in a row. Now, obviously, it's a little hyperbolic given the fact that some of them are younger dudes. Um, but I'm on rise a slot guy. He never gets targeted downfield. I think he had like one catch of 40 plus yards downfield. Jameson Williams will be back by October. So that will be his role, not Amon Ra St. Browns wouldn't be surprised if Amon Ra is like the wide receiver two in fantasy over the first four weeks of the season because who the hell else are they going to throw the ball to but I think at the end of the day he is someone who just compiles you know six for 80 games and scores a touchdown in every other game which is fine he's a wide receiver one in my rankings but until he develops like an explosive he also doesn't like separate immensely from man and press coverage which is something I feel like if you don't do that at a very high level you can't really get into these types of tiers. So Amon Ra is another dude that fine with having on my team, of course, and I'll be happy to draft him, but I don't see the ceiling being much higher. Devontae Smith, I think he's as good as any second wide receiver on any team, but AJ Brown is just such a thoroughbred that it's hard to imagine Devontae Smith kind of overtaking him. Although over the second half of last year, Devontae Smith actually out-targeted and I believe out-produced AJ Brown over the last eight weeks of the season. So maybe we see a dice up. There have been weirder things that happened. Devontae Smith is someone that I've been moving further and further up my rankings and I know it's like you know everyone has met the wide receiver 12 13 but for me there's almost uh, despite me actually already having tiers here Devontae is like the clear guy that I want out of the next five receivers in the same tier we have T Higgins DK Chris Olave Amari Cooper and Calvin Ridley like Devontae it, those guys aren't really the same for me it's like I'm on Raz's his guy and then Devontae's the clear next guy for me Higgins is cool but Jamar Chase is there uh, fucking alphing ever everyone and everything in his way, including his own teammates. T. Higgins will have 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. That's what he does year in and year out. His box score has been like wildly the same every single year. Some injuries, sometimes with Jamar Chase in, sometimes not out. At the end of the day, he just ends up with the same fucking numbers. I do think he's got a high touchdown upside because Joey Burrow can rip off a 46 touchdown season at any given point. But that's besides the point. We're just projecting for what we think will probably happen. We can't just like project. We can't do all of our rankings based on if we hope they hit an outlier season. So Higgins cool sitting there at wide receiver 13 right in front of DK Metcalf, who is now splitting more targets with JSN. Metcalf is wildly talented. I don't think Tyler Lockett has really lost a step, to be honest with you. So I'm not like super confident in how the targets are really going to play themselves out there in Seattle. I think JSN can really like make a name for himself over the second half of the season and be a big time playmaker there. So I'm a little bit more skeptical about Metcalf this high up in drafts. Like, I think I'd rather take Lockett at the wide receiver 27 than Metcalf as like a third round pickish. but he is what he is and he'll give us these numbers. Olave, Olave is another dude that I think probably has borderline the most upside out of anyone in this category, maybe outside of Calvin Ridley, if he could find his form. Um, but Alave broke out all over the place last year. He's a phenomenal route runner, just a really good receiver who's taking over the wide receiver one spot. I like Derek Carr coming over. It's better than whatever the fuck they've had the last couple of years. So he's a top 15 wide receiver for me. Amari Cooper, same thing. He's coming off of probably his best year, which is like 80, 1108. And I kind of expect the same thing, if not even a little bit more upside because if Deshaun Watson can find his form again, then Cooper's going to fucking blast off there. They're going to be a very good offense with you know, high scoring opportunities. So if Cooper ends up finishing with like 10 or 11 touchdowns, also wouldn't surprise me. Calvin Ridley, a little bit risque. I know that this is more of just like, listen, I just want to play ball. I just want to play some fun fantasy football, man. And if I can't get behind Calvin Ridley, then what can I get behind? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for nothing. That is, that is the slogan for Calvin Ridley this year. Okay. 
Calvin goes to the Jaguars. Christian Kirk's coming off the wide receiver 11 finish. So, you know, some people might think, look, listen, Kirk's the guy there until Ridley proves otherwise. I think Ridley's just going to come in and alpha everybody as well because Ridley is one of the smoothest route runners in the NFL. He's not like old. He's not beat up. He's not worn down. He was mentally worn down, but now I think he's back on track. Everything you hear out of Jacksonville's camp is just like how good he looks. And he's being tied to arguably like, one of the best quarterback prospects we've ever had who's finally coming into his prime. So another one that I don't necessarily want to overthink there, um, I would be happy with Calvin Ridley as my wide receiver too. And then we jump to the puzzle pieces tier. And again, if you are enjoying the video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And the best way to support our brand is to go cop the draft guide either on bdge.shop if you are not in a state that is eligible for underdog or I would prefer you go through Underdog and sign up using promo code BDGE. $10 all the way up to 100 bucks, and they will double whatever you put onto your account. We could hit the pick'ems like we will at the end of this video throughout the entire season, or you can just do best ball drafts to get prepared for your actual fantasy drafts. But use code BDGE on there, and that's the best way to support our brand by far and away. Puzzle pieces. We got Terry. We got no idea what that quarterback play is going to look like. Keenan Allen, has he lost a step? Quentin Johnson getting in the mix, mm, a, a little bit iffy there. I, his second half of the season numbers, they weren't like efficiently great, but the volume was crazy. He was averaging like 10 targets a game once he was healthy and back from the injury. I I, I kind of feel like Keenan might be on like the latter part of his career where we're starting to see a little bit of dip off in terms of like how he was so good at separating from defensive players for a very long time. I feel like we might be kind of at the end of it there. So he's moving down a little bit. Uh, Christian Watson, we just don't know what we're getting from Jordan Love there. Although if Aaron Rodgers is still there, I think I'd have Christian Watson probably like in between maybe Metcalf and Alave or Alave and, and Cooper in there. Like he was nuts last year, went absolutely fucking crazy. Uh, even if you took out his touchdowns, right? He was scoring touchdowns left and right. If you took out his touchdowns, he was still averaging like 11 half PPR fantasy points per game, which is really, really good for a rookie. So it's hard not to just think, like don't overthink it. Like Christian Watson has had a phenomenal rookie year. He's probably just a really good player. DJ Moore goes over to Chicago. He's going to be the alpha. That offense is going to be way better. Justin Fields is going to take a huge step up. I don't see a reason why... DJ Moore can't be this year's Amari Cooper. He goes over to an offense where Jacoby Brissett was the quarterback. They weren't a pass-heavy offense. They weren't an explosive downfield offense. I don't understand why Justin Fields can't feed DJ Moore to the point where he is this year's Amari Cooper and finishes as the wide receiver 10, 11, 12. Phenomenal route runner, finally in a situation where I feel better about than any situation he's been in before. So I know people are fading DJ Moore, but I'm in on it just because I like the Chicago Bears situation. They bring in the offensive line. They bring in new weapons. I think the offense overall is just going to be a thousand times better than last year, which means Justin Fields will be a thousand times better than last year in the passing game. D Hop joins Tennessee. This one I don't necessarily love, to be honest with you. I kind of just threw him in out of respect to fucking D Hop after all the alpha years that he's had in the league, but I'm not really looking to draft him much in fantasy. I think he'll end up with 900, 1,000 yards, anywhere from like six to eight touchdowns. But like even when AJ Brown was there in Tennessee, he was having some struggles. Like we knew. If he ever went to a good offense, he would explode, and that's what we saw with Philly last year. But while he was in Tennessee, the passing volume was low. He had a big touchdown year one year, but a lot of those touchdowns came from like long passes, right? Like the 40, 50, 60, 70-yard plays that he can do at 23 and 24 years old. DeAndre Hopkins is like 30 years old. He's not making those 60-yard plays downfield anymore, so I think he can catch a ton of balls there and be Tannehill's go-to, obviously, but like... Do I expect him to have high touchdown totals? Do I expect him to match A.J. Brown's totals while he was in Tennessee? Honestly, not really. So I got him down here at a low-end wide receiver, too. And then Ayuk, I mean, the quarterback situation is kind of up in flux. They have so many good fucking offensive players that it's hard to actually project any of them to have, like, unbelievable offensive years statistically. But I will say, I know people that have, like, connections to the to the Niners locker room, and every player in the Niners locker room basically knows that Ayuk is him. Like, Ayuk is... The out he is like one of the best route runners that's been on that roster in a very long time um they know that he's like the clear wide receiver one when they need somebody to win a route and like catch a pass and i think we're gonna see that kind of play itself out over the next couple of years and he's gonna develop into the guy there because debo's great but he's not the wide receiver one he's not a wide receiver one he is a phenomenal athlete gadget player who can catch passes and separate if needed but can run the ball a lot like 
Ayuk is the actual number one wide receiver in that offense. And I think if we see a Brock Purdy year where he gets 17 games, we're going to see like a lot of stability around this passing offense. And I think it's going to lead to a big year for Brandon Ayuk. So there you have it. We've got the 24 wide receivers. I'll list them real quick for you. We've got Justin Jefferson in the GOAT tier. We've got Cup, Chase, and Tyree Kill in the league winner tier. We've got Diggs, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Jalen Wild, Devonta Adams, Garrett Wilson in the week winners tier. We've got Amon Ra, Devonta Smith, T. Higgins, D.K. Metcalf, Chris Olave, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley in the 80 for 1108 tier. And we've got Terry We've got Keenan, Christian Watson, DJ Moore, D-Hop, and Brandon Ayuk in the puzzle pieces tier. Now, as promised, just wanted to go over these lines real quick. So you have my, all the way on the right, like my rankings that I just showed you guys, the fantasy rank of all those wide receivers. And then the third row is the underdog receiving higher or lower line that you can go bet on right now. Again, if you want to hit the underdog app, you want to use promo code BDGE, they're going to double whatever you deposit down there right now. And then the fourth line is the rank amongst those 24. So there are other wide receivers that I put on the bottom. I put Evans, Hollywood, Michael Pittman, Christian Kirk, some other notable wide receivers that you might want to see their line of. So the UD line rank row is not of all wide receivers on the app. It is just ranking them based on the top 24 that I have. And then the last row is the difference between where I have them ranked and their receiving yardage line. So again, there's other factors. It's not just receiving yardage automatically like translates into fantasy points. There's touchdowns, there's receptions, all that kind of stuff, depending on what league you play in. But the biggest difference is here, Devontae Adams has the third highest line on underdog at 1325.5. I have him down at wide receiver nine. Chris Olave has the 10th highest line, 1,065.5 yards. I have him as wide receiver 15. And then Chris Godwin actually has the 18th highest line at 905.5. And I have him down at wide receiver 24. And I realized that I must have missed somebody in my rankings because Godwin was not on the top 24 in my in the tier sheet. Did I only include 23? I might have only included 23 in that tier sheet. Well, Godwin is my 24. But as you can see, Mike Evans actually has a higher line than Chris Godwin does. The guys I'm higher on than the UD lines, I have A.J. Brown's wide receiver six. His line is at nine, but I also expect him to score a lot of touchdowns, so that makes sense. Jalen Waddell, three-spot difference. I have him at wide receiver eight. His line is at 11. Calvin Ridley, I got at 17. His line is 21st. Christian Watson, I have at 20. His line is 23rd. So I would just use like Vegas lines kind of as a tool, as like a bumper, right? Like maybe I need to go relook at Devontae Adams again. Not that I need to relook at him because he's been a part of my life at this point for like fucking eight years and he's been ruining my life for eight years. That's not even true. I, I don't think I've ever faded him whatsoever. This is actually the first year I'm like taking a stance on him, right? You got to like, you got to take a stance on people. You want to win the big bucks. You want to take home the hardware. Sometimes you got to take a stance on the dudes that everybody loves or the dudes that everybody hate. You fall in love with them okay find the flaws in people and fall in love with them i'm doing the opposite of that for Devonte adams this year so i'll leave you with that go watch the running back version of this video subscribe to the channel if you're new we'll have a ton of more fantasy content coming out over the next few days and go sign up for that underdog app use promo code bgge they'll get you a 100 deposit match plus you will get our draft guide emailed to you absolutely boat free that's it i love you I'm out. Wow.